clocks from the cold play <laughs> on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and back. Carl Pilkington. Hey. He's raring to go. That's nice when you have a bit of time off, isn't it? Yeah, how long have you had off now? About then, three Carl? weeks. About, about three, three weeks. weeks yeah. Um, we can't do that because we're sort of self-employed and we'd be letting people down. But it's different when you, you know, you get paid anyway whether you turn up or not. But good to have I'm you never, back. Good I'm to never have off ill. No, That's the first time I've no, never I just, been off ill. Well, no, I mean, just, just you're off two weeks and then you're off. No, I just wish I was the kind of person who could let down an audience I know, of, of regular really, listeners. Yeah. yeah, but I will, like I say. Well, no, we spoke to you, you weren't that bad. A cold, you don't go home for a cold. Um, we were discussing this last night in the pub, and, uh, you know, you don't go home for a cold. Um, okay, then, so moving on, what have we got then? We've got some great cold, songs. Though. I've brought in the Smiths, I've brought in Buzz Cox, I've brought in Neil Young. I know Steve's got some hip hop. Some great hip hop. I've got some great Elvis Costello. It's, it's gonna be great. Uh, Carl, come on, concentrate, you've been away for three weeks. It's just a noise. No, stop saying that. Because you're annoying me now. Why? Oh, what do you do? Go in ill? Oh, oh, he's annoyed me. Oh, has he? Yeah. I got a bit of I'm a little bit annoyed. Can I have some time off but still get paid? Yes, of course you can. Steve, Tom. right? He called me up, winding me up about this. I'm right. I'm I'm nearly th I'm thirty. Right, I'm thirty now. I can only remember being off two times. Oh, his memory's going as well. You'll have some time off. <laughs> and both of them were when I when I was at school. School? One, What's one, school? One when it was windy. Why did yeah. you have time off? Because it was windy. But to be honest, Carl, that lasted no, no, for wait. seven years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your time wait, off wait, at school. Wait. Why did you have time off? Because it was windy. Were you windy, or was it windy outside? No, it was, it was a really. It was like when your when auntie wasn't out the window, was she? Yeah. When the winds were bad in the seventies, and my mum said, "Oh." Was it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I remember space hoppers and flares. I don't yeah. remember the winds being bad in the seventies. <laughs> well, my, my mum just said, uh, "You might get blown into the road, so don't." Go <laughs> <laughs> she had so much faith in you, didn't she? As a human being. Is that why she got fired from the pie shop? <laughs> I'm not coming in today, I might get blown into god, the room. The, oh god. The funny god. thing it was, right, Steve, they, they had this, this thing going at school, because a lot of people used to wag it back then. Right? Used to what? Wag it, sort of not go in. Yeah. Right. Right. And, um, they sort of tried to make it interesting for you by giving you a- An education. A certificate. A right. certificate if you yeah. did a full week. Re reward for the rest <laughs> yeah, of your exactly, life with yeah. achievement. That right. sort of- that sort of carrot. And mm. also, like, let you go home at three o'clock on a Friday. Right. right. If, if you'd done a- like, a full week and that. Right? Yeah. So it was, uh, it was lovely weather all week. Then it just ch sort of changed on a Friday. And I got up and it was all windy. It was windy said, for Friday on the 7th, yeah. isn't it? Uh, don't- don't, you know, if you don't want, don't go in because, you know, you might get blown into the road and that. So I said, all right, then I'll stay off. And, um, so why did she uh, <laughs> told you to hold, hold on to a fence or <laughs> yeah. walk you there? What's this don't go out? <laughs> immediately you give blown? up. I love this getting blown into the road. Is that based on your cats that kept getting blown into the road? Well, so I got to, got to school on the Monday, right? And the teacher said, Took right, long time. today, uh, to punish you, you're the only one who wrecked the whole week, right? Everyone else came in, you didn't. So everyone else is going home at three o'clock today. But you're not. Brilliant. Serves you right. And, uh, and I wasn't bothered though. It was great because I said, well, you'll have to stay with me, won't you? And it was great. So all I did for half an hour was doodle and stuff. It was great that afternoon. Yeah. And that, that was ages ago. That was like when I was about eight. And that's one of the times I was off ill. Yeah. So it was but that wasn't even ill. That was wind. Yeah. Well, yeah. So right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a bit different when you're to in be the honest adult with you, world, though, Carl. You can't just not turn up because you've got a bit of a cold or you're a bit fed up. I mean, we had an appointment four o'clock Thursday, wasn't it? And he had to call. He said, "I'll cancel it." Oh, I went on meeting, went on a bit late. Yeah. Time management, get things done. If it was important, you'd get it done. Play a record, Carl. Pull your finger out, please. Elvis Costello, Allison. What a great track that mm. is. Beautiful. Well, Carl, we'd better tell them all the new great features we've come up with in the time you were off. <laughs> right, well, we'll, uh, we've got the film thing still going. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's where you take a lead role or a, or, or a major role in a, in a Hollywood blockbuster, which we then give away on VHS worth six ninety nine. <laughs> And uh, something new we're trying out because Rockbusters is dead, thankfully. Yes, is uh, it's gone for a bit. It's over. Um, crosswords. Crosswords. Oh, this sounds intriguing. Where would you get the idea from? <laughs> what's the what's the basic uh, <laughs> format of this? Right. What I, what I've done is I've yeah. um, yeah. take like a, a popular saying from the show. 
A popular yeah. what? A popular saying, something that crops up quite a lot in the show. In our show? Yeah. Yeah. Um, first thing that spring, sort of sprang to mind was, uh, there's this airy Chinese kid. Oh, okay. classic. But more, more commonly it would be something like, Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah, play Carl, record, you idiot. Fool. Where, Carl, you're a fool. Oh, what did you mean? You let us down again. Yeah, you Carl, where have here. you been? Yeah, oh, you... you've got a headache, have you, Carl? Yeah. You better have a lie oh. down. Typical yeah. phrases like that, Yeah, sure. typical phrases like that, yeah, yeah. Carl, you're a loser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And, um, what I've done, I've got a load of different songs and took words <laughs> from the different songs and then joined them together yeah. to make There's This Airy Chinese Kid. And then people have to email in and say what the five songs were. It sounds like the most complicated game ever. I'm looking forward to it. Are you, have you heard any of this, Rick? Because I've not heard this at all. Yeah. I'm not familiar with this. Well, all it is, it, it, it'll go like, Eric hey, John, he's a kid! And that's, it's from sort of four different songs. Right. And you've got to identify the songs. Right. Uh, wow. How many songs in this, Carl? Five. Yeah. Five. There's this hairy Chinese kid. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> and uh, what are the prizes for that? Are yeah. these the prizes? Yeah. All right, well, let me tell you what they are. They're not too bad, actually. We've got, um, Live Forever, which I assume is a, a CD that ties in with this new Think film. Think of that! A well-known phrase from the show, and it's Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> yeah. What other- where would you There is no other radio show in, in the life? world! I- this is- go on. If you've just tuned in, yeah, I mean, what, what are you do thinking? You think if you've just tuned in, you're going, well-known phrase from the show, Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, classic. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be playing that in charades this Christmas. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is uh, a CD that ties in with this new film Live Forever, which is all about uh, Britpop, and so there's stuff on there from Oasis, Blur, Pulp, etc. Uh, we've also got uh, another Red Dwarf DVD, uh, Marion and Jeff, the first series of that, excellent. <coughs> That's on VHS, sadly, but uh, never mind. And um, and also uh, the very best of Led Zeppelin, a two CD set there with uh, all the classics on. So that's not no. bad prizes, actually. Can't, you've we've done yourself we've proud. It. We've upped it. We're getting serious now. We're playing in the, you know, the bigger league. It's, we've upped the stakes. And we want Heat Magazine not to, you know, lose touch with us just because Rockbusters is gone. Yeah. I think they're still behind us. We're, so we've got, we've got, we've got, uh, we've got film, you appear in a film, we've yeah. got, uh, crosswords. <laughs> How is that to do with a crossword? Because I've got words and sort of cross them. Okay. Right, you don't really <laughs> cross them. But, uh, good. So words, we're playing a game called Words. <laughs> word Song. Hello and welcome to <laughs> Word Song. <laughs> Brilliant. And, uh, and obviously I imagine there'll be some more great music. But we've got a new feature, haven't we? Which one's this? Are we doing, um, within the Monkey News, the new oh, feature? Oh, Steve. I'm excited. You know Monkey News is my favourite feature, so what have you uh, added to it? Explain it. Right, well, uh, there's been loads of stuff going on in the past few weeks, right? Uh, but for the times when I struggle, when, when sort of monkeys have had a quiet week, <laughs> and there isn't that much news going on, sure. right? come up with this thing. I sort of speak to an expert. I've, I've spoke to him already. You, right? spoke, you spoke to an expert? Yeah. A monkey expert? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I ask him a question. Wow. Right? The feature, it's got a good name. You know, that's the way I work. Yep. Cheapest chimps. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. And what I do, I ask them a question about, you know, or oh, how much does it cost to, you know, keep one? How much does it cost to, you know, feed one for a week? Yeah. All this sort of stuff. So I, I give out like a monkey story, and if that isn't enough for people, they'll also learn something else at the end of it. Right. Yeah. So like... It sounds fascinating, can I say right now? Yeah. That's just some of the things that we've come up with. Play a record, Carl. Please still continue to listen there. Yeah. Baby, come on, come on down. Richard Ashcroft, buy it in bottles on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, I need the phone number of your girlfriend. Let me explain why. I was lucky enough, once again, to be on your quiz team yeah. this week. Um, uh, Ricky, still to beat me. He's still to beat me with his team, yet. We, second. Uh, second I came. We, uh, we just, the, the, the gang here and some friends, we uh, sometimes go down to a pub quiz in the local area and um, I was very nice, I was invited by Carl to be on his team. Uh, twice now I've been on that team. Uh, Ricky's always on another team. And um, I, what can I say, Carl? I, 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 do you mind me saying this now? Because I've, I've, I've analysed 
the team, and it's your, very much your team, and, uh, and you've put the team together, you've recruited some excellent personnel, your girlfriend's uh, very, very good on the team, yeah. as is one of her uh, work colleagues, and uh, you normally bring in, you know, someone like myself. I like to think I've been providing certain something with the entertainment section. I seem to remember last time I answered at least six or seven questions that other people hadn't got, so I, I felt I, I provided something there. Um, Carl, I, I rather like John Harvey Jones, who used to be called in to sort of troubleshoot companies, I see why you are not winning, ever, and it's a rather pricey uh, contest, isn't it? It costs a tenner to enter per Each. person, yeah, yeah. and unless you get in the top three, you're not, you're not going to get to see your money back, right. so um, I think you're going to maybe need to step down from the team, because Carl, oh. I'm not sure, I am not sure, oh. you, you consider yourself a kind of player manager, but frankly, I'm not sure you're providing enough. Right. See, this is, this is funny, because... As bad as I imagine you are, I don't think Steve would make it into my team, so he's getting a bit cocky here. I want to know what your opinion of him, because he's told me he's great on it. Well, it you, you've hung out of order, first of all. <laughs> <right>? Okay. <laughs> Do you have a good night when you're with us? Um, I tell you what, I wish I'd, I wish I hadn't lost a tenner every time I've come <laughs> down. <Right. laughs> that well, would have improved it. You <clears throat> point out there about the football analogy. Mm hmm Alex Ferguson, yeah. when did he score a goal? Right. He doesn't. He tells the others how to do it. Mm. Yeah. Right? Mm. That's, that's my role. He doesn't take up one of the eleven, though, does he? No, exactly. It's not like you can only field ten. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> we've only got ten again. I, yeah. I want to be in the eleven. <laughs> exactly. He's not running around in midfield, no, falling no. over. Yeah, shouting, oh, what have I told you? Yeah. No. Right. I'll admit, right? And there's a limit of five players. We should explain that. That's the point. Yeah, there's only it? five players there's on the players, team. Players, yeah, so, yeah, so. But, it was pretty tricky on Tuesday, though, wasn't it? It was one of the tougher... T t tell tell everyone one. the one question you got right. It oh. was something about, uh... Well, tell us the answer. The two words you had to say to get the answer. Danny Minogue. Danny Minogue. <laughs> <laughs> that was what you provided, Danny Minogue. <laughs> Is this valuable? Is well, no, 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 not really, because, because, because there was at least two of us who also knew the answer. Oh, well, he, uh, we, we he, gave he, him, we gave he him, didn't we, provide, didn't no, exactly, we gave it to Carl, we massaged his ego, oh, but, dear. um, oh. I just feel Carl, I, 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 do you know what, I'm a little, I feel a bit bad now, because I just either had a crushed face then. Le, le, can I just it, tell it, you right it, now? He just can't believe this. Can I just tell you right now, I think the problem is this, I think there's that precious fifth position that is not being filled at the moment, I think consistently enough by a decent player, right? You've got a solid team. I'm thinking if you want to remain on the team, you are going to have to pull your finger out and find a fifth member that is going to provide, and I'll tell you where the weaknesses are, I can tell you right now, mate, the weaknesses are natural history and science. Oh. Something which Ricky Gervais is scoring on week in, week out on his team. There's, there is a few Now, sciences. if he was available for a transfer, we could be fine, but we've got to find someone to fill in that space. Otherwise, I'm either going to quit or you're going to have to step down, because I don't think I can be on a team where, where, where there is these his obvious deficiencies. There and, are visible deficiencies and in the And, you know, the ten pounds. That's ten pounds. I'm not made of money. That's once a month. I've, I've seen him depressed for two hours when he lost twenty pounds at a casino after five hours Don't bring it back. Don't bring, don't bring that back. Don't yeah. bring up that again. Yeah, yeah. That, that story. He doesn't like wasting money, Carl. You know that. What do you think? What do you think? What's the solution? We've got to be- we've got to think proactively now. We've got to sort this out. See, there's always other things going on in my mind when I'm in that pub quiz. For me, it's just a little bit of fun. Sure. It's a night out, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Uh -huh. Suzanne enjoys it. Yeah. It's a bit of a get together, we have a chat beforehand. Yeah. We have a bit of fun. Yeah. But there was other things on my mind. What were you Carl, thinking? I could do that here, I don't no, have wait, to lose a tenner. Wait, what were you thinking during the quiz then, when the questions were coming out? What were you thinking of? Well, what it was, right, just before the quiz started, I had to go to the toilet, right, because the rule is, right, people who don't go to it, once it starts, phones off, oh, yeah, no more toilet, the room, they yeah. take it dead serious, don't yeah, they, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I went to the toilet. Now, I'm not being out of order here, it just got me thinking, right? I went to the toilet, the gay fella in there, right? There was a gay fella in there? Gay fella in the toilet. Now, well, how, how could you, you know? tell? How did you know? Just typical, you know, everything about it, right? It! <laughs> everything about it, right, yeah. Oh. Well, large right, hand of my moustache, what, leather what, what, cap. But, butt plugs, ammo nitrate. Could I just say that... These views do not reflect the views of the management of XFM or me and Steve. Go or on, most Carl. of the people in this country. Go on, go on, Carl. What's your problem? Yeah, but this is what I'm worried about, really. But this is why I only got Danny Minogue right, <laughs> right? Because this was floating around in mind. <laughs> Went She's to a toilet. big guy, icon, now, isn't she? Now, to the toilet, they have, they have, like, men's cubicle and they have women's cubicle. Yeah. Now, without sounding out of order, is it wrong for me to think <laughs> gay men should have their own little cubicle. Go on, in. They should <laughs> have their own- well, not cubicle, you mean an actual toilet, yeah. I suppose. When I was at the urinal, yeah. 
normally, you know, there's a fella there and then you go, all right, and there's no pressure. But I couldn't, I couldn't go. I was thinking, should I wait? If I go into the toilet, it'll look obvious. Yeah. I had loads of pressure and but this was going on. what were you worried on. about? I'm so sorry. What were I'm you so concerned sorry, about? I'm so well, sorry, viewers. I'm so sorry. Well, it's like, right, listen, when I was a kid, right, <laughs> and it's all right for you to go into women's toilets when you're a kid, it's like, oh, it's a bit cute, yeah. right? As long as you're not, like, over 15 or something, right? Right. But when I was a kid, I went into a toilet and women, when they use their little cubicles, they don't shut the door. Some of them just sit down on the, on the toilet, yeah. right? And you see everything. And, uh, <laughs> No, seriously, that's probably one of the <laughs> first times I saw, like, a woman. Yeah. That, right, I mean, Auntie Nora when she was staying over. <laughs> what happened with your Auntie Nora? She was, um, she's into wearing caftans. Into wearing what? You know, caftans. Oh, what, yeah. What caftans? Big, bellowy sort of dresses. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I used to sit on the floor at home in front of the telly. Sure. She was on the chair behind. Yeah. She did a bit of a, sort of a Sharon Stone scene. Oh, God. Yeah. Did you see it? Mm. There was no underwear? No. <laughs> what what age it? were you? What was it like? What age were you? It was like a ripped tennis ball. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> right, we're off air. We're off air. Either that will put us in for the Stoners. <laughs> That's how I'm living. Ice tea. That's how I'm living. A bit of old yeah. school hip hop. Where's our tea? Or our <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Go make me a cup of coffee or something. Well, before you do that, can I just qualify something? I'm a little bit concerned yeah. about your your toilet discussion. Well, what exactly is your point again? I'm yeah, just a bit bemused. You see, it's it's a tricky one. All I'm saying is right. There was at the pub quiz. I go to the toilet. Not thinking about anything. I try <laughs> to go. Right? There's a little gay fella next to me. <laughs> I love this little gay fella. Now, the weird thing is, there's nothing stopping him having a little, little glance, right? Because he's allowed in, in the fella's toilet. Yeah. Now, I'm not allowed to go into the woman's toilet and have a little, have a little look round. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm saying is, should they have another, another toilet area? What, for gay people? Yeah. And... So this would be gay men and lesbians? Uh Is that going to complicate things? Well, I mean, I can only assume, I mean, to what point, uh, that's your question, right? If you're intimidated, that's, I mean, that, that, that's a shame. But, you know, most gay men aren't looking at your knob. You know that? What do you mean? I can only say that 99.9% .9 of gay men who use a urinal standing next to what they assume is a heterosexual man, aren't looking at his knob. What are they doing then? They're, they're emptying their bladder. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, you-, I, you can't, I can't talk you saying, this, Ricard. You're saying, like, you know, about would you have one toilet for lesbian women and gay fellas, right? Well, does that mean, yeah, would it be mixed? Would it just be- well, Would it be have a- would it have a man- and one, that's a of men, a little picture of a woman there, and then, what? What would the little icon be? To a man and a woman. A man and a woman. Just having a chat? Yeah. yeah. In pink and dark. But you, you couldn't mix them because then what would happen is, you'd get people who, who were going, oh, I'll, I'll play, I'll play up to this a bit. What, yeah. pretend to be gay? And yeah, you know, sort of grow a moustache and shave their head. And pretend to be a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so, well, I see, so you know people pretending to be gay so they could go in and have a look at the lesbians? Yeah. Right. So that would mean that we need four cubicles now, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, no, this is fine. Four cubicles. So, so, so every pub How now, many toilets do we need <laughs> Every at the pub's moment? now got four toilets. Oh, Carl, bisexuals. <laughs> yeah, no, interesting. Bisexuals, how many toilets do we need now? <laughs> Call you, the council. Do you use any? Huh? No. No, because no. they're interested in everything, aren't they? Because a little bisexual fellow will be looking at your knob. Right. With them, yeah. what you do, you just have a door, you open it, and there's one urinal there, so you can't get a queue. They have to, they have to sort of wait. I just thought of it. Well, why can't there just be a, a thing between the urinals, so anyone, no one can look at anyone else's knob? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just to go back to Ricky's point. What stops, even if we've got the toilet for gay men, what stops the gay men who want to have a look at your willy 
going in the regular toilet and pretending that yeah. they're straight. Most men don't Who's wear, gonna police don't this? wear gay across their <laughs> no, head. No, exactly. They don't have a tattoo. There's no branding yet in the British house where they have to declare. So we're gonna have to expand this. What so we've all got to carry, carry identity cards. Do you, do you know cards. you can see a gay, can you? Coming a mile off. Can't, no? No, I'll just hold it in next time. No, 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 no. Can you tell gay men? Do you know a gay man? I'd say, uh, probably... If you did like a- if you lined some people up yeah. and said, point them out, I reckon I'd get- But hold on, we're not talking about people dressed in leather with the arse cut out and an handlebar moustache. Yeah. We're talking about, uh, you know, the everyday, no, non scene No, of course, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. But I mean, uh, suppose I put you in a room and there was ten naked men, right? Yeah. And, uh, could you- there's five gay men and five heads. Could you walk along that line looking at those gay- uh, uh, Am I naked? No, you don't have to be naked. Why would you have to be naked? To catch him out. Ray <laughs> Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now Carl Pilkington is getting ready. It's the start of a new strand in the show, a new quiz, a new competition to replace Rockbusters. Now that's quite a tall order, but yeah. what have you done? Right, like I said, right, if you've only just tuned in, what it is, I took and I'll be taking a well-known saying every week from the show, something that crops up a lot. Uh, first one that sprang to mind was... There's a little gay fella standing next to me in the urinal? That's next week. Okay. This week, there's this airy Chinese kid, right? Yeah. That crops up quite a lot. Sweeping the nation. Right. So what I've done, I've got five songs... Yeah. And I've edited them together to make that saying. You've got words... You, f from songs where any part of that sentence occurs yeah. to recreate it. Yeah. Now, what do they need to do? Do they need to say what the song is? Just the five songs? I mean, I, I was gonna say song and artist, but if you want, just a song. So five, there's five things there, and if someone doesn't get all five, it's still worth emailing in because yeah, we might give it to the one who's got the most and then... Yeah. Uh, Can I suggest, uh, we go for artist rather than song, only because sometimes it's quite tricky to get a song title, sometimes it's more obs it's very odd or it's not quite what you think it is, so maybe artist is a- is an easier one. Do you, are you happy with that, Carl? It's your competition. Right? I mean, Steve always does this whenever I come up with an idea. Oh, yeah. I just try to make sure it's just the best it can yeah, be, Carl. Yeah. yeah, no, he came up with a few game shows and Steve was going, no, it's no good, and Carl said to me, he said, it's the one of the office ever got on telly. Yeah, but, well, we shall see how cheap his chimps plays out, but yeah. frankly, the fact that- <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you said to me, Steve, I've come up with the best game show ever, it's called Cheapest Chimps, what's the idea? I don't know, I just like the name. I, it's something to do with chimps. I thought, well, I'm not sure that's the best- the best game show ever. And well, what was I the other one you came up I with that you told me I think a few people will be disagreeing with him, Carl. I think people will say that Cheapest Chimps could be the best game show ever. You know, when I was at school, people like you, I really didn't like. You're a stirrer, Gervais. He flits, doesn't he, from one side to the next, Carl. The one thing we may argue, mate, but at least we're consistent. Ricky Gervais flipping from one side to the other. One day he's Carl, on Carl's side. when was the last time Steve wrestled you to the ground and got you in a leg clamp? No, you're right. Never. What, is, is that supposed to be a good thing? Well, did you see us? Yeah, I saw you struggling in the- <laughs> in Carl's office earlier. He was punching my legs to release me on the floor. And I was squeezing him with my mighty legs, wasn't I, Carl? Right. It was like, I imagine that's what a crab feels like when an octopus has got it. <laughs> we were playing that, weren't we? So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll play you this clip now, it's ten seconds long, we'll play it a couple of times because you'll need to take it in. Mm -hmm. Uh, so here it is then. Uh, what are we saying? We're saying artists? Let's go with artists. Artists, so email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, name the fa five artists it has taken to make up the saying, Give there's that email this Chinese again. kid. Give that email address again. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. There's this right. airy Chinese kid. Here we go. <laughs> play it again. Let's play it again. Here we go. <laughs> I think you better play it once more. Oh, right. I've got I've got them. Have I've you got, got them all? Yeah. That's nice work. Here we go.
There I can just go. remind you now that the prizes include a uh, Red Dwarf DVD, Marion and Jeff, the first series of that on VHS, uh, a Live Forever Britpop CD, and also the very best of Leb Ze Led Zeppelin. Let's play one of those actually while we're here. Brilliant rock and roll. One of the prizes on Carl's competition this week is the very best of Led Zeppelin, that's obviously rock and roll. Uh, we've also got uh, Live Forever, Britpop CD, Marion and Jeff, and Red Dwarf. And, uh, should we play it again? So There's got this hairy chance. Chinese kid. Who yeah. are the artists? Here we go. <laughs> it's tricky, it's not very <laughs> easy. Once more. Oh. One more. Well, there you go. Ricky Dodger at xfm.co.uk. Those prizes can be yours. Mm. I, uh, at the quiz, also discovered, of course, and, um, I don't know. I'm just intrigued to know, Carl. I'm just intrigued to know. Um, it was your girlfriend's birthday, wasn't it? Earlier in the week? Mm. Or last week? On Monday, yeah. And, um, I mean, obviously it was a triumph with the stuff you got for Christmas. Um, the condoms. The box, the box of condoms. Box set, two. box set of condoms. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not just, not just the singles, the <laughs> exactly. whole, the whole set. Yeah, a complete collection. Brilliant. So what'd you go for this what'd time? What'd you get her? Yeah, but- No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, but no, 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 yeah, but it's her birthday. How long have you been together? About nine years. Okay, so, ooh, God, it must cost you so much. No, but it starts getting tricky, doesn't it? Because I spoiled her a lot <laughs> in the first few years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then you Here's start... a packet of rubber bands. Enjoy yeah. them. Oh. Well, she- it's what she wanted. Okay. I mean, you're making out as if- No, no everyone wants paper clips. <laughs> Come on, what did you get her? Got her a, a new pair of gloves. Right. Alright, well. And? What, nice- nice leather ones from Selfridges or Harrods or something? Uh, they were good ones, of the sort she likes, so. They weren't- Well, they, they, they weren't the little woollen ones that she had. Yeah. I thought that was a joke when she said he got me these, because I laughed. No, that's- but I know that's- the, the one she did have, the- When they said it's his birthday, right, it was her birthday Monday, and me and Steve were wanted to get her, and she went, he got me these, because she had those little woolen gloves on, I laughed, because I thought she was joking, Carl. <laughs> that's what she wanted. Right. I've told you before about buying presents, it's- it's- Did those gloves have your name sewn in them? <laughs> <laughs> and a piece of string <laughs> that r ran over the back of your <laughs> duffel coat. You know, I've never been into getting presents and that. I had the problem at that Christmas one, that time with the Victoria Plum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd right. hate that. We'd we've, hate to bring that back. We've done that. Because <laughs> you talked about the book, because it's kind of to do with your dad, isn't it? He's, he's a very bad gift buyer, was that the problem? Well, yeah, my dad's- I mean, my dad just wouldn't bother. It, it was my mum who sort of made an effort and- she sort of worked out half of what I wanted, then she left it to me dad to get it off someone, see if he could get one cheap or whatever. Uh, what I, lo I love the fact that usually people talk about like drinking heavily yeah. or um, uh, violent abuse, right? Yeah. But here's what he's been left with and scarred with from, from parents is bad gift buying. Yeah, and that's the Victoria so bad, Plum incident. In the greatest scheme of things in the world, yeah, but that's not a bad thing to have, is it? <laughs> Right, there was this, there was this, this is what it's like about getting presents and stuff, right? Mm. With me, with my mum and dad. Go on. My mate, Colin, right? He Colin had a, No, Colin Bailey. Oh, right? yeah. He had a, uh, little, uh, Sinclair Spectrum, right? Yeah. Computer. Yeah. Which was like the, the, the thing to oh, have at that yeah, time, yeah, right? Yeah. You saw always go round to his house. The it's deal was- Not the one you had to play through the window, cause you weren't allowed No, to no, play. that's another lad. Oh, right? yeah. This is, this is a different lad. And the deal was, he came to our house, and my mum gave him a pie. <laughs> and then I'd go round to his, and I'd stay there for a few hours playing, you know, Hungry Oris and stuff like that on it. <laughs> sure. right? Now, my mum and dad knew that I really wanted one of these computers, right? So I waited about a year, came round to Christmas Day, I thought I reckon I uh, might have one. Turned out they bought me the wrong one, they bought me a ZX81 instead of a Spectrum, <laughs> right? And Christmas Day, I'm there trying to load the games up, it's not working, I'm thinking what's wrong, right? And the thing with me, when I was a kid, I used to get quite sort of agitated. This quite is the easy, this is the moment, right? I found out that it needed a RAM pack to make it work, right? Looking in the thing, and it's saying, and, and make sure you put your RAM pack in the back. And I was like, oh, where's the RAM pack? And my dad's going, I don't know. I've got you the main bit. That's that's it. So I was that wound up 
I just was sick. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just sick. I, I didn't feel sick or anything. I just was like, oh God, went to the sink, just, just sick. Because I was that on edge about it. I said, come on, we've got to get one. And my dad's like, Tandy's shut. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get anything today. Ruined again, Christmas day. That was after the year when my train set got blown up by our kid. The following year, no ram pack. And now you ask me why don't I get good presents? He's stunned. He just, just I'm gonna die. Honestly, I'm gonna die. He's <laughs> just been sick. Yeah. <laughs> There's no ram pack. <laughs> Why was- did you get to the bottom of it? Why wasn't there a ram pack? You have to buy them separate. Oh, right, okay. Comes. What do you mean I can't play Frogger? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, um, there, wasn't there another incident when you threw up? Spontaneously threw up? Oh. Through sheer anxiety? I, I do get it. It's, uh, it's not so much now, cos I've, I've relaxed a bit, but as a kid I used to be quite on edge all the time with certain things. Do you think that's what happened to your The cat? wind that kept being sick. That it didn't get the food it wanted. And it just threw up. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. God, so they shaved it. Yeah, but again, you see, the cat thing, I mean, it's mad, I was thinking about it the other day, right, I, I used to think I had quite a normal upbringing. He didn't. Right, and someone was talking Your about the Your mother once told you not to go to school because it was windy, Carl. It yeah, was not right? a normal upbringing. The cat was being sick, so she shaved it, so it was easier to clean. <laughs> right, well, my mum and dad went on holiday, right, and I <laughs> stayed at the Rosses down the road. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Only a kid, must have been about five or something, right, and, uh, I was- Always running around in the house, he had a lot of energy as a kid. What the Rosses did, they had this cat that was dead violent, the most violent sort of angry cat I have ever <laughs> witnessed. <laughs> a tiger? It was, it, honestly Steve, if it was bigger it would have been, because it was just always having a go at you. Yeah. If you went to pat it on the head, it went to bite you and stuff. And what they used to do with it, to stop me running around, I'd sort of be running around, and then I'd get a bit tired, and they'd say, have a lie down, and say. So I'd, I'd lie down on the settee and I'd nod off, and what they used to do, I'd wake up and they'd I'd put the cat on my belly. <laughs> right? So I'd be scared to move because it's like it's gonna get me. But it would keep you there. It, it kept me there and it used to sort of slaver on me and they'd sort of, you know, go out or whatever and I'd be lying there. That's not normal, is it? Carl, sorry, were you created by the Brothers Grimm <laughs> for one of their fairy tales? What kind of a life is that? Um, <laughs> a, a cat paperweight to keep yeah, Carl yeah. in place. He keeps blowing around. It's windy. <laughs> we'll have to weigh him down. Be careful. Your mum probably told him that it's a windy day. You got to get something heavy on him. Otherwise, he just gets blown into the road. God bless him, Carl. Let's just hear your uh, your thing once more. Give one people more a final chance. All right, here we go. <laughs> Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Can't stop the spirits when they need you. This life is more than just a read through. Ooh, those chili peppers are quite hot. Can't stop xfm one hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. All right. Carl, you know what? You know what the time is. Bong. <laughs> Monkey news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Imagine if Trevor McDonald started like this. Yeah. There's- there's been a lot of stuff going on on that, with monkeys. Oh yeah? I've also- I was mentioning earlier how we sort of making the grocer- the, the, gro the feature grow a bit, uh -huh. right? So, I'm thinking- Oh, I haven't told you Steve either. I've actually been asked to write a thing about monkeys. A poem? A no, what? no, for a magazine called uh, something Apes. Right. They it want me to do. Ape. They want me to do uh, like a column, five hundred words about, about apes, about monkeys. Anything I want on monkeys, anything. What are you going to write? Don't know. If, you know, think about it. Well, give him a typewriter. I can't with Shakespeare, <laughs> eventually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you could anyway, write about that. Why didn't you write about that? You don't. The fact that you don't believe it. You don't believe that an infinite because, number of monkeys because, could type because you watch Shakespeare? Because you reckon most of them hadn't read Shakespeare, so they wouldn't know the, some of the spellings. <laughs> exactly. It wouldn't happen. You idiot. Get on with it. Alright. Right. The, uh, there's been a few things, but one that springs to mind is, uh, they found a load of monkeys somewhere. <laughs> right. okay. This is brilliant. <laughs> yep. I mean, imagine this if this was news. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Uh... Where? Somewhere. I think it was in, uh... 17th century? 
I don't, it doesn't matter that bit. Right? Okay. Find <laughs> 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 a load of monkeys yeah. that are, uh, having a good chat. <laughs> God. They're having a good chat, all right. They've found monkeys that can talk. Yeah. Um, about, f they've worked out, they've got about 534 different words that they're using to, like, have a chat about stuff. More than you. <laughs> yeah, what do they chat about, then? Just, you know, things that monkeys are worrying about. Just, <laughs> you know, where do you get that from? Uh, <laughs> you know. Who does your hair? <laughs> you going out with her again, are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Have you seen that, uh... Sorry, you can't just leave that. No, 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 I'm just intrigued. I'm just intrigued to know what else. Is there any... No, were I mean, that, that Were was... they discussing the humanity? Did you see that programme on Channel 5? Yeah. yeah. He can walk upright. Yeah. But I mean, what, Did you what see how they, well Do you mean they taught them, they taught, they taught themselves this language? Yeah. Where? Where is this? In the wild is this, is it? Um... Not sign language, it's but... It's in, in some jungle somewhere. They found these monkeys. He heard some, you know, some explorer was over there cutting through the, the woods and that. And he heard his name, heard and he thought, that's what he went, what do you want, Riley? It wasn't me, I didn't say. Yeah. I, I didn't say, I always snod grass, where'd you get that gun? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that, well, it's only me and you here. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> weird, isn't it? No, it's not weird, it's not true. Well, right, come on then, what's next? Again, but what I'm thinking, well, I mean, that did happen. So, um, well. Um, and to sort of add to that feature. That, that's not true. We're doing, uh, Cheapest Chimps. Right. Can I just say now to the audience, if you thought that Rockbusters was bad, if you thought that that piece of rubbish earlier about the Chinese hairy kid was, was bad, I, I'm suspecting this is going to be really not very good at all. I don't, I'm not, I'm just pointing the finger. What I, do you think of it? What do you think of his negativity, Carl? In, in, he in just space? keeps, he keeps doing it. I just don't think you should start with the name of the quiz first. This is my, this is my only concern. You, you, you come up with cheapest chimps. <laughs> and now you're trying to construct a game around that. And I'm works. not sure it's a proper- well okay, let's- what is the game? Let's hear it. Right, it's about, uh, a chimp, right? Surprising. Uh, I spoke to an expert about him. Um, Who was the expert? Someone at London Zoo. Okay. Um, how many bananas do you think the little chimp, what they've got at London Zoo eats a day? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> How many is bananas it, does a little this, chimp at London Zoo? Can I call in for this? No, I, I'd, I'd leave it. I'm just testing it out on Steve because we've already got an email thing going on here. So how many bananas do they eat a day? One chimp per day, how many bananas? Yeah. How many bananas does a chimp eat a day? And does this mean that, because sometimes I've seen them on the telly, they peel one, they'll just eat a bit of it and then they'll throw it away. We're talking a whole banana? But how many bananas does it eat a day? Um, <laughs> how many angry. bananas do you eat a day? <laughs> getting angry. Come on. Well, I, I'll, I'll try and have two if I've got time, but I'm okay. pretty busy. Well, I'll go <laughs> swinging on your tyre. <laughs> how, uh, many, how many do you have? I reckon? think uh, a, a little monkey, a tiny little monkey, per day, uh, <laughs> over the course of a day, I reckon he probably eats 15 bananas. Right. Ricky, what are you going for? Little chimp at uh, London Zoo. But, hold on, the, but, but presumably they don't only feed it bananas. So okay. it's, so it's, so the question is... It's how many bananas does it eat? Come on, Yeah, Rick. but how many does it get given? It would eat 15 if it was given 15, but it might be given a, one slice of banana, 15 oranges, 200 potatoes and some lettuce. How many bananas does it eat? Come on. It's Five. Just, have a guess. Five? Yeah. Right. It's only one. Yeah, because it only gets given one. Cheap as chimps. <laughs> what? So what? it's pretty cheap to have a chimp. Right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm on your side now, Steve. I don't understand what happened then. Wait, so, at the end of it, you always shout, cheap as chimps. <laughs> <laughs> is that, what, what, that's the quiz, is it? Oh, play a record, Wait, Carl. so is that it? Is that seriously is it? Is that it? Was that, that, was that the first instalment of cheap as chimps? Yeah. We'll have to see what the press say about this. And, and, um, and why does it only eat one banana? Because it only gets given one banana. I think that's all it wants. No. So you don't even know, you didn't even bother no, to ask it would, him. it wouldn't just get given one banana. And, uh, so I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, um, cheapest chimps, that... That's safe, that's, that's gonna run that's, and run. Yeah, that, I that can, is gonna run and that's run. That's really got legs. Uh, we're, I'm gonna check the press Monday, I can only assume it's a triumph. <laughs> exactly, another Pilkington triumph. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give the prize, if you don't mind, Carl, to... Karen and Jeff Gillian, because they're the only one that got, they were the only couple that got, uh, the second answer, which was very, very But pretty. they got four today. But they only got four but right. four is the top answer, so should we give so the answers now? So play it, now? Carl, and then tell us who each one is. Right.
So there you go. I didn't know the second one. There's but the Terry Chinese kid. So the first one, the last. The last. There she goes. Right. That's George Harrison. No. That's Philip Bainbridge. And that's Deacon Blue. Right, so it was, it was the Lars. Yeah, what's the second one? Strokes. Oof, that was very tricky. That is hard. George Harrison, Harrison for Ari, yeah. that's all I could get. It was Ari. Uh, Ari Krishna, yeah. yeah. It, uh, no. Uh, Chinese, Phil Bailey. Chinese uh -huh. War it is. Yeah. And Deacon Blue, Real Gone Kid. Real Gone Kid, yeah. There's this Ari Chinese kid. Very, yeah. very hard. I love the fact that the normal bit of that, like, the normal bit is like the well-known phrase, there's this Ari Chinese <laughs> yeah, kid. Yeah, exactly. Like, Nothing happened there. That's normal. There's this hairy <laughs> Chinese kid. As a phrase that often- In fact, you're right, we must have said that phrase twenty times today. <laughs> what- when was the last time that was said twenty times? Never. I don't think it's ever been said anywhere. There's this hairy Chinese kid. I don't- I mean- Even in China? I don't think it's- well, it's very rare. Definitely relevant. not said in China. <laughs> <laughs> the prizes they've won? The prizes they won, Red Dwarf DVD, Live Forever, The Best of Britpop, Marin and Jeff on VHS and The Best of Led Zeppelin, well done to Karen and Jeff Gillian. I've also seen no proof of this hairy Chinese kid. None whatsoever. Excellent. <laughs> Alpine Stars, Burning Up on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Steve, you're out of the room there. Mm-hmm. Carl took a phone call from someone. Okay. He's found a cellmate. Right. Not a soulmate, I think one day they will be cellmates. Yes. Because he's just like, he loves everything Carl loves, and he was telling Carl stuff, and Carl's face was lighting up. Yeah. He's told him of two Russian kids in the circus, they're covered in air, and their mum tells them off because they're covered in fleas. <laughs> Carl said, see, that annoys me again, innit? They just, they do something else. And the bloke went, yeah, they should just make money out of being hairy. <laughs> and Carl went, exactly. <laughs> and, the, and he said, have you heard of the, the three-legged juggler? And the bloke went, no, what's that? He went, that annoys me as well. Because he thinks they shouldn't have done juggling, they should have done football. <laughs> do you know what I mean, though, Steve? There what do you mean something... a three-legged juggler? What are you talking he's about? He's a famous three-legged juggler. Oh, he's mega famous! <laughs> he's like the Beckham of wherever he's from. But the other day I was looking in, I don't know, Bizarre magazine or something, right? And there was this fella who, uh, he had no arms. Uh, so you saw a picture of him, his job was fixing watches, did it with his feet. <laughs> Go on. Well, it's just why pick the most hardest job to do when you haven't got any hands? Crush, <laughs> crush grapes. <laughs> or. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, that annoys me. Oh, crush grapes! Imagine him being told that and that he comes into the, uh, uh, the careers advisory where he goes, Now, uh, what do you want to do, Hargreaves? Uh, make watches? Right, take a look at your arms. Crush grapes, mate. <laughs> Sorry, you're a grape crusher. Next. Brilliant. Brilliant. I would love you to be a career advisory in some sort of clinic. It would be brilliant. I love the fact that it annoys you. Here's a man, he's got no arms, he has learned to fix watches with his feet. Yeah. An incredible talent, an incredible skill, he's utilising that brilliantly. That's annoying to you, you are angered by it. I, I'm only being honest. Now you be honest, right? Your watch is broke, who would you go to? You're in a rush, you need it fixing in a rush. <laughs> now, you need some fresh wine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're amazing. But what's this thing that you've been talking about, this video? Freaks. Right. It was a thing that was banned for like 50 years. Uh, I think it's been taken off again, but I don't know why if it's just been deleted. Right? I, I, it's a quest. If anyone out there has got a copy of Freaks on DVD or VHS, can Carl borrow it, please? I just, I, I mean, I almost want to set up a camera to see him watching it. Um, it's absolutely real. They use people in the circus of the time. I think it's the twenties or thirties of the depression. And there's there's people. There's conehead. There's a bearded lady. All genuine. There's a bloke they call the human slug who's got no arms and no legs. Carl, and he's just there, and he rolls a cigarette and lights it with his mouth. I think I've seen his brother, <laughs> who isn't called the human slug. Is called the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> right? How does he make a living? He, um. <laughs> does anyone want to meet Carl for money? 
Do you know what I mean? The like, annoying thing was, right, there was a picture of him, I was gonna put it on I our- I think I've seen his brother! I've, uh, on our website we've- we put things up like this, right? If you go to ricky.gervais at x7.co.uk forward slash- What? You put things like that on my website? It's nothing to do with me. I want people to know that that website is not kept or looked at by me. So, I don't- what have you put on there? There's a fella on there who's known as The Pillow. <laughs> And he's, God. um, you see, I, I get a bit worried with things like this, cos we're not sort of having a, having a go or anything, it's just things that fascinate, fascinate you. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's a guy, uh, it might, it might be the same sort of thing, what's your one I called? bet you used to stare at people with goiters, didn't you, when you were little, in Tesco's? Well, just go, go to xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky, it is. What's the worst thing you've ever seen on, like, a human face? You know, you know what it is and what I don't want to talk about it. I can't remember. No. Have you told me? Yeah. What is it? But go, it's not go the to, elephant lady. Go to should... the yeah. Is it the elephant lady? You talked about that, I know. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it again. Go to the website and see the human pillow. <laughs> Why I... is he a human pillow? That's what annoyed me. I thought he was more of a draft excluder. <laughs> 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 oh, that breaks all kinds of rules. Buzzcocks, harmony in my head. Now, things are flying here at XFM. We, we, people have called in, there is a video of Freaks on the way, Carl's gonna see that within the week. That's exciting. That is exciting for me, do you know what I mean? <laughs> about our education of Carl. We started off trying to teach him about science and history and now we just find that he likes pictures of airy Chinese kids and Who women. Doesn't? Who doesn't? No, true. You've got a theory about pictures of Freaks, haven't you? Uh. It... <laughs> You see, you see, you always bring things up that I don't want to talk about, cos I'm, I'm really worried that people- if you've just tuned in for the first time, it's the first time you hear it, and we're talking about airy Chinese kids- Yeah. Talking about the human world. Carl, Carl, listen. People don't think that you're taking the piss out of those people. They lump you in with them. They, yeah. Do you know what I mean? They, they think that you're a freak of nature. So you can say anything you want. Do you know what I mean? Cos it's honest, it's from the heart, it's genuine. So- don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, but Suzanne was saying last night that I, I've just- I've got a heart of stone, or whatever it is. Why? Because- because I wasn't crying at Comic Relief. And I, all, I, all I always used to say to her, get out Elephant Man, let me watch that for 30 minutes, I'll be crying my heart out. Why? Why do you care about that but not- Because it's- that. that- that is more real, isn't it, right? Think of John Merrick. Sorry, sorry. What, the film starring John Hurt- is more real than footage of starving people in Africa. No, but what I'm saying is, think about. See, this is why I didn't want to bring it up because people are gonna <laughs> just say. Well, you're allowed to cry at what you like. You can't. People can't have you for not yeah, crying imagine, at someone and crying at someone else. Imagine that. Like, if you've seen the film, you know his head's all you know messed up and that. Yeah. He's getting picked on all the time. Yeah. By it's Michael just, Elphick, I remember. Yeah. yeah. It's just really, really sad. Whereas, you know, we're trying to help But you yeah, give him a bun people. and he forgets it. Do you know what I mean, though? He never forgets, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. Oh, God. We're giving away stuff again. Yeah. Um, time Tell for Tell me the your theory about p p p freaks who have their picture taken. No, I I'd leave it. No, can I tell we'll you? We'll do it next week. Then. Can I tell you what this Go is? Go on quickly. What is it? Right, when he sees a little picture, like in his books, he's got. He carries round those oh, yeah, yeah, things, yeah. right? And there's like a, a fella with a little head with some like uh, uh, able-bodied people. He goes, the only reason he must know, the only reason they got to take that picture, right, was so they could show their mate, say, look at me, the little <laughs> fella with a little head. <laughs> that's what. That's his theory. Yeah. For every picture of a of a of a freak, they're right, being exposed. Steve, let me describe the picture to you. <laughs> this this little fellow with a little head, right, playing not on the piano. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> All his family stood around and mates and that. When have you ever seen a picture of someone playing the piano and everybody wants to be in on it? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen. Maybe it was one of those kind of Christmas <laughs> cards they it sent out to everyone. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. You could see one of them was like in a rush to go away. He was probably uh, planned to go out, and he was like, "But they were taking a picture. It's, oh, I'll be in it then before I go out." And it was all. He's out of order. Yeah. If you say, if, do you know the one I, I mean? I do know the one you mean, yeah. <laughs> what about the one in the, uh, when you went down to Cornwall 
in that little we'll pub. We'll talk about that next week. What, 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 you wanna get on, do you? Yeah, right. We've got our giveaway, uh, another prize? Yes, um, you lucky, lucky people. For those of you that haven't seen it, and do not have the requisite £4.99 to buy it yourselves, <laughs> you can win on VHS cassette, panned and scanned, <laughs> Billy Elliot, the special edition, includes oh. bonus documentary, The Billy Elliot Boy. Oh, and, uh, um, I'd like to see how the, they really sort of got, made that film. Exactly. Well, it's the, it's the, it's the hit film, Billy Elliot, and you can win that on VHS. Um, because, Carl, I assume you have included yourself in an excerpt from the movie. Taken a scene from the film. Uh -huh. Who do you play? Billy? I'm playing the part of Billy. Brilliant. And uh, we'll have a question at the end of Come it. Come on. Yeah? Brilliant. Two, three part of all way and go. Alright. Just spin, uh, spin down the valley. Tell you the half where you. What are you looking like that for? What's wrong with Bally? What's wrong with Bally? Yeah, well, what's wrong with it? It keeps you fit and that. What do you think, Auntie Nora? What do you think about me doing Bally? I used to go to Bally. There you go. She used to go to Bally. I used to say I could have been a professional dancer if I'd had the training. Bet you were pretty good, weren't you? Wasn't the time you, uh, wasn't the time you had wind for five minutes, was it? But you well glided across Will the Will you floor. shut up? What's wrong with Bally, anyway? For girls. No, no, not for lads, Bally. Lads do football or... Well, I've done that, yeah. Boxing or... Did that for a couple of weeks, so... Wrestling. Wrestling? Yeah, wrestling, yeah. Oh, friggin' Bally. Well... Don't worry about it, anyway. Just... Is it alright if my mate Wayne stays over tonight? He just wants to sleep over. He's just coming over to- Wayne, sleep? Yeah, he just stays over. I'm not gay or anything, he's just- I don't fancy him, I'm not- Yes, you do. I don't- Yes, you bloody well do. What, just- just because I want my mate Wayne to sleep over, and I've started doing ballet, that- that turns me into a gay man, does it? You haven't seen me Village People album lying around. You're asking for a hiding. Just joking. Just having a just having a laugh. Just didn't mean. <sighs> Funny nothing here. I'm going out. No, I'm no on you. Stay here. You'll look after your nana. Got that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there it is. What's the question? Powerful. Uh, I'd like to know. What was the name of the actor that Carl was taking the role of? Does that make sense? That's not yeah. grammatically quite right, but anyway, well, yeah. Fun. Who was the uh, who was the young lad that uh, Carl was taking the place of there? Uh, name the actor, not the character. And just email in Ricky at xfm dot co dot uk. You can win yourself. You gotta be fast. You can win yourself a VHS edition of Billy Elliot worth four pounds ninety nine price. I'm going to leave the uh, sticker on, which has actually got the price on. Brilliant. I'm gonna leave that on so you know just what you've got in your. <laughs> Foo Fighters. No, it's not. It's Feeder. This is. Feeder. Feeder. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing now. Why have we got to stop? Sorry, we just had an argument then. Why have we got to stop at 5 2? It's just, uh, the, f the football's on, isn't it? So. So yeah. we, wh what can we do? We got to do a link here and then we can play. We can we talk play here, we'll play a song, do a little. What about chat. the competition? We've got to announce the competition. Well, Steve. Well, yeah. I can tell you right now that, um, there's only two people, it would appear, that are interested in a VHS copy of Billy Elliot. Um, that's how mediocre that gift and that prize is, Carl. I don't know if you want to learn from that. Yeah. But I'm going to give this one to, uh, MJ McKay, who has correctly identified that you were taking the part of Jamie Bell. That's it. Billy Elliot. So, uh, well done. Right, just forward me that and I'll, uh, sort that out. We'll get the video. What film are you doing next week? Don't know, I've got, uh, been out and bought a couple. Got, uh, got Silence of the Lambs I can do something with. Right. Uh, bought Fight Club, but it's a bit difficult. Uh, you know, always, always open to suggestions and that, so, you got any favourite films What about the 1930s film Freaks? Oh. oh. I can't wait, I cannot wait for your- That'd be brilliant, that'd be good. Excited about that. Why don't you do a film review of that next week as well? Yeah, well it depends if the fella, you know, if, if anyone's got it, just send it in, I'll send it you back once I've watched it. 
So that'd be good. Uh, next week we'll do, uh... Oh, please, please, please tell me there's gonna be more Cheapest Chimps. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank goodness. We'll see what the press say, we'll see what the press say about that. Looking we'll forward to that. that. Do you know, like, you're always having a go at my ideas. Yeah. Little, yeah. you know, Cheapest Chimps you've put down. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, I, I normally come up with these because you don't come up with a competition sure, idea. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. He's done yeah. him again. Yeah. Well, Cheapest Chimps, mine, you're dissing it. Yep. Rockbuster's one of the most successful competitions ever. Uh-huh. Uh, and he means in the world, not just yeah. on XFM. Yeah. You put that down. Yep. Right? Uh, what are you thinking about this, right? I was watching Comic Relief okay. last night. Came up with an idea. Mm hmm Right? You get... Jono. Okay. Jono right? Coleman, yeah. Uh, say, Vanessa Feltz. Mm hmm Uh, you know, maybe, you know, Dawn French, cause, cause she'd be around for that. And then get them all in a room for Comic Relief. And what you do, put a cake in front of them. Yeah. Right? And, and like, you, you don't feed them, and like, they're going, oh, I'd love a bit of that cake. <laughs> right? It's called Famine Academy. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> Whilst they lose pounds, they get pounds. <laughs> right. What do you think? Play a record, Carl. Well. I love it, Carl. Again, Tom. again. I love it, Carl. I mean? Yeah, again. I love it.